All right, what's going on, everybody? So I did make a video about public versus private schools, the pros and the cons. Now, in this video, I'm going to be addressing the public and private schools, but I'm going to hit it from a different perspective. So if you missed that video, I highly encourage you to go back and watch it. In this video, I'm going to go a little bit deeper into some of the experiences of going to a public and private school to help someone who's deciding should they send their child to a public or private school. So let's start with the private school. Some of the experiences that I've seen for parents who sent their kids there was that they had smaller class sizes. They said that their learning improved, um, but some of the kids who needed extra time to take tests, um, like an IEP, they didn't have the support. So they found out quickly that their kid would do better at a public school. Now, some people that flourished in a private school and went on and did great things, you know, they didn't have that problem because they didn't have an IEP program, for example. So let's say if your kid doesn't need IEP and the, the school cannot provide those resources, which most private schools from what I've seen don't, they might go there and say, I'm in a smaller class setting. It might be better for them to learn. They might go there and have certain type of curriculum that they are more interested in because they have a lot more flexibility as to what they can teach. So they might do a lot better academically. That is very possible. Now, I will say there were some things like the dance, the social gatherings, you know, uh, even though you have some similar stuff as a public schools, it's just on a very smaller scale. So, you know, I've seen people at private schools who had to go to their home zone based public school to be able to attend like a prom because some private schools don't even have it. Or if they do have something as an alternative, it's not the same experience. It's very limited in, in what they do. So to get that real life prom experience for the, you know, dance and stuff like that, you find a lot of private school kids going to the public schools where they're at, or they might stay where they're at, but some private schools don't even have it. Some of them don't. So that's something that I've seen. Um, another experience is if you are playing sports, some private schools don't have a lot of home games because they don't have the stadium capacity. Now, some do. There's a lot of wealthy private schools out here that have home games, but some don't. Some are smaller. They're not as funded and they have to go on the road. So think about if you're a parent, you have to drive, you know, an hour or 30 minutes to an hour every week to see your child play. That's a big sacrifice, not including the times you're driving them to school every day. Now, on the public side, some of the biggest challenges that I saw, you know, and experience wise, um, is kids being able to get out of their home zone based school because it's hard to transfer in some capacities. Some people do it, you know, through sports, but they're either moving to another location, they're doing a magnet program. And sometimes parents don't want to do all that. They don't want to have to relocate or send their kid through a, a rigorous program that's a lot harder and probably not interesting just to play a sport. So they're boxed into their home zone based school. Now, some counties are loosening up on that across the globe. But for the most part, it still looks like if you're not in the magnet program or open capacity for seats to, to available to transfer, you're pretty much stuck at your home school. And if you don't like that school, it kind of sucks because you're forced to go in proximity. So I hope this video helps. Choose wisely.